Amy of Fashion Toppings here, and today we're going to go ahead and make t-shirt extenders. This is the shirt that I got at the um, outlet haul that I did on our last video. The problem with these shirts are is they're so short, they actually stop at the, where they show the bum, and they also show the heaviest part of my legs. And so for me to be able to wear leggings, I wanted t-shirt extenders. So I went to the retailers and they ran anywhere from $19.99 to $29.95 for a little strip of material. That's all this is, like a little mini skirt. So I'm gonna make t-shirt extenders to go with my t-shirts for this winter or also to have for, to put underneath my sweaters. So to Joanne Fabrics, I got a pink t-shirt, a black t-shirt, and a yellow t-shirt. And today I'm gonna be doing the yellow. I've already done the blue. So I'm gonna show you how to do it it's real quick and easy. So, I'll put these aside. Now these shirts are only uh, on sale, usually at Joann's, for $3.50. Uh, regular price, they're $4.99, but if you have the Joann app on your smartphone, they always have coupons for 40% off and 50% off regular price items. So, if they're on sale, they're $3.50. If they're not on sale, you can use a 40% or 50% off coupon from your Joann app on your smartphone to get them even cheaper. So, let's go ahead and get started. First thing that you need to do is we need to measure our waist. So what you want to do, I measure right across my hip bones because I like to wear my t-shirt extenders right at the waist of my pants so that it's above my belt line because sometimes you have a bulky belt, you can see it through your shirt. So I want to have my t-shirt extender right at the top of my waistline at the top of my pants to kind of help hide that belt. And another reason you wear a t-shirt extender is in order for me to get a long enough t-shirt, I usually have to go to like an extra large or tall, and they're usually fuller throughout your silhouette. So then you feel bulky, and, and so it's nice to have the t-shirt extenders because then you get to keep your silhouette up here, and you're not so layered. So these are a nice thing to have, and you can make them for under $3.50. So take your measurement at your waist across your hip bones, and my measurement is 34. I'm sharing it, yes, 34. My measurement is going on YouTube. Usually I would never share that. So I, I remember that measurement. First thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is take my t-shirt, turn it inside out, and you're gonna to wanna to cut it right across from arm to arm, right across the armpits. Take the top half of the shirt, because we can use it for another project later on, save it, put it in your scrap pile. Now we have just the bottom of the shirt. The part we need to make sure that we're working from is the bottom hem, because with this material, the nice thing is, you don't have to finish the bottom of your shirt. It's already hemmed commercially for you. So make sure we're working from the bottom. Lay the bottom closest to you. Okay, now, I know that I want my shirt extender, since I'm gonna be wearing it with leggings, mostly, and you know jeans, but I want it to come below my bum or my butt. I'm gonna measure from my hip down how long I want my shirt extender to be, and mine is 11 inches. So I'm gonna do 11 inches plus one inch so I have a casing for my elastic. So from the bottom of your shirt, you're gonna to wanna to measure up your, how long you want your shirt extender, which mine is 11, and I'm gonna, so I'm gonna measure up 12, and I'm gonna place a pin. Next, I'm taking the measurements from around my hips. Like I said, 34. Can't believe I just shared that on YouTube. So I'm gonna put my measuring tape right at 34. And I'm gonna fold it in half because then it automatically cuts my measurement in half with, for me and I don't have to do the math. So I fold my tape measure in half at my 34 mark. Start from the one edge, one fold, and measure across. Put a pin in to mark it. Okay, now, use your chalk, make a straight line, go about a half inch past your mark, because we need a seam allowance. So, and draw a straight line. Okay, so I drew my side seam, I drew a straight line. Now, across the top, where you measured up your length that you want your shirt extender plus one inch. We mark that, so now we have to draw the line straight across so we know where to cut. So 
So we can cut right on that, that line because we already added in our seam allowance. So I'm going to go ahead and cut on that line, nice and straight, make sure everything's lined up, laid out smooth. I'm going to scrap away. Now I need to cut along the top line. So we just have to start, as you can picture it, of our shirt extender. It's like making a mini skirt, but a really mini, mini skirt, because it's a shirt extender, not a mini skirt. But it's the same concept. So let's take it to the sewing machine. We're going to sew a side seam down one side. We're going to fold the top over one inch, make our casing for our elastic. I've already pre-measured my elastic. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But let's head to my sewing machine. And let's see how to put it all together. OK, now we're going to go ahead and sew up the side seam the side seam all the way down our side. I've got it set to a zigzag stitch. I've got a ballpoint needle in. So I'm lining my fabric up just inside my foot because I'm using a zigzag because Jersey Knit does roll at the edges. And normally I would use a serger, but if you don't have a serger, you go ahead and put your, your fabric right up to the edge of your foot and that's where you're gonna start with your zigzag stitch. Now, Normally, my machine has a fix button, so I don't have to do a back stitch, but you're going to want to go forwards and backwards to lock your stitch in. So lock your stitch in when you begin. I have a fix button, so I don't need to do that. And have it set to a zigzag stitch. And the thing you'll notice is I'm not pulling my fabric. I'm not pushing it. I'm letting the machine do all the work. All I'm doing is guiding the fabric through. Pulling or pushing, just letting the machine do the work. When you get to the end, either do your back stitch or like I have my lock button, which will fix my stitch for me. And your side seam is done. Next, you're going to take your elastic. I use what's called fold el uh, folding elastic, but it's so much softer than regular elastic. And I measured the exact distance of my waist and added on a quarter of an inch. You don't want your elastic to be too tight because then it will cause the muffin top and squeezing of skin that's not muscle. So now we're still working with our shirt inside out. So I'm gonna fold the top down. and I'm gonna fold it about an inch and then pin into place. Okay, now I've got it pinned into place. Always double check your work. Take your elastic, set it on top of the area you just pinned and make sure that the channel you're making for your elastic is gonna be wide enough for your elastic to fit through. Always double check that before you put your final stitch in. Now, we do have to leave an opening for us to feed our elastic through. So what I do is on the side seam where it's not noticeable, I will put a pin sideways as a reminder. So when I get to that sideways pin, I'll remember I need to stop sewing. So let's go ahead and get this casing done. Always make sure your thread is underneath your foot, your foot, your feeder foot and pull back and out of the way. Okay, slide this on. I'm gonna start right after my pin that I have set sideways. Let's start right there. On the, and I'm gonna sew right along the bottom of my casing with a zigzag stitch. Fix, now I have my fix button. You might want, you have to do the back stitch or the fix button, matters what your sewing machine is. On zigzag, fixing it into place. And then slowly feeding my material through. Letting the machine do all of the work. If you force it, you're going to get puckering and bunching. Lip of my material is. I'm staying very close to the edge of that so that I don't have any rolling after I've washed it.
Okay, as you can see, I'm back at my pin, my pin that I have marked, which tells me to stop sewing because I need to leave that opening. So I'm going to hit my fix button, or you do a back stitch, either way, and cut my strings. All we have left to do is put our safety pin on our elastic, feed it through the opening that we have in our waistband, which our pin marks. We have our opening. So all we have to do is feed this through, through now, and then I'll be right back. Okay, now I got my elastic fed through. Pull it up enough so that you can work with it. Make sure it's not twisted anywhere inside of this, otherwise it's gonna be really annoying when you wear it. So we're going to match up the ends and we're gonna sew them together. If you wanna use a straight pin to hold it, then you can do so. So slide this under your presser foot. And I'm gonna reinforce this with a zigzag stitch back and forth. And then reverse. And forwards. So I do that, oh, at least four or five times. And then I fix or back stitch to lock in my stitch. And voila. And I just pull on it and it will pop right into our casing. There we go. And all we have to do now is just close up that hole. Put that back under our sewing machine. Just stitch that hole shut and we are done. Okay. Fix a stitch or back stitch, whatever your machine calls for. Okay. okay, now let's go try this on. And now I have the yellow one. This project is done. How easy was this, really? I made two in less than 20 minutes. I made my cobalt blue one, my yellow one. Now I need to get busy. I need to make pink, black, maybe I'll get some leopard, some lace. It's unlimited, under, th uh, under $3.50. Why pay $19.99, $29.95 at a store when you can make them yourself in any color you want out of a simple t-shirt? I hope you try to make one. This is Amy of Fashion Toppings. Until next time, you have a great day.